Today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. What do you even wear for a date? I mean, my full-size Spider-Man costume is at the cleaner, so I guess this'll have to do. And now to freshen up a bit. <sighs> Ugh. Oh man, I'm out of cologne. No, you're not. Ugh. Look in your hands. I just sent you a shipment from Scentbird, the monthly subscription service that lets you choose new designer fragrances for both women and men each month. Who are you? I'm you from the fancy future. Anyway, for only $15 a month, you can get a 30-day supply. That's 120 to 140 sprays of incredible scents, like Fortitude by Robert Graham, A Fighter for the Resistance, or Luna Rasa by Prada, which you're holding right now. What's going on? You can also upgrade for extra products each month if you're fancy like me, which you are because we are forever linked. Try Semper today and use my promo code for 30% off and you can save the future. I mean, uh, have a good date. Wow. It smells like... The Prophecy? Precisely. Did you know that they just let people say whatever they want online? <laughs> Seems like an oversight if you ask me. I just finished watching an awful viral video from Blossom called, Is Your Food Fake or Real? Find out with these 16 easy tests at home. What? My food might be fake? It's been out for a couple of days and it already has 100 million views on Facebook alone. <laughs> and it's also gone viral on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. I better watch this to make sure I'm not eating something weird. I mean, 75 million views, it must be good, right? No, dumb Jarvis, it's not good. They're just making things up. In fact, they've introduced a problem that no one in modern society has to worry about. You know, I don't know why I like scrolling up and down on Facebook so much, but what I do know is it's my choice and my choice alone. All right, it's time for a nice balanced meal. Hey, maybe your food's fucking fake, dude. Whoa, I never thought about that. Trusty Facebook algorithm known for its bulletproof track record. When have I ever laid you wrong? I'm always looking out for you, buddy. That is true. After all, I never would have found out that 9-11 was an inside job if it weren't for you. Good times. Also, you can't forget about that time that I told you that Jay-Z and Beyonce are both lizard, lizard people. people. Okay, you're always right. You don't have to keep rubbing it in. Take another look. Okay, fine. Oh my God, I can't believe it. This whole time? This whole time I've been eating a collection of short stories by Ray Bradbury. Now, before we get into the plastic meat and potatoes, I wanted to point out that this video is made by Blossom. If you're not familiar with Blossom, they're another one of those content farms that uh, make pointless content to harvest clicks for views. It's like another five minute crafts with amazing life hacks. Like when you forget that you didn't clean the black tar off your strainer before putting it back in the drawer. Or, or completely relatable situations, like when you're folding laundry and suddenly decide to turn yourself into a hoodie crab. We've all been there. Or maybe you remember them from last year where they claimed that you could turn peanut butter and hot coal into diamonds overnight. Well, it's safe to say, that much like a male cow overcoming constipation, Blossom is back on its bullshit. And why shouldn't they be? The video that that clip is from, which is only half fake, was the most viewed video on Facebook in 2018, at least according to them. And in this business, if something works, it's going to be repeated. So uh, watch my video on High School Musical. I worked really hard on it. So let's get into it, shall we? We start off by comparing processed cheese and natural cheese, and it looks like uh, processed cheese doesn't melt as well. So we're just coming out of the gate with nonsense, I guess. Processed cheese isn't some sort of evil secret of the food industry. It's something we buy on purpose. And melting is like one of its main <laughs> strengths. Processed cheese isn't difficult to melt. It just turns black like most things do when you hold them next to a fucking fire. Okay. I'm ready. I got my handy coffee and we got Steve behind the camera. Hello. We're gonna test some of Blossom's claims. I'm pretty sure they're all fake, but I figure we may as well put it to the test, right? Um, I've got some Kraft singles here. The finest of processed cheese. Nice American cheese. This is like, you know, a metaphor for America. Processed, artificial, mm -hmm. um, orange. <laughs> We also have some, some mild cheddar cheese, some, some natural cheese, if you will. Uh, we'll see how this burns. Five minute crafts, more like five minute craft. It's more of a, it's 
more of a written joke. So we've got the natural cheese, we got the natural cheddar, and then we've got the American. And I've got a lighter, so I guess we're just gonna like burn this and see how it goes. Okay, so it seems to like be bubbly. It's like, of course it burns. Like, I'm gonna set off the smoke detector. Make sure these windows are open. Okay, that was close. Now I'm out of breath. How much were they heating this up? <laughs> it's like if, if the flame were further away, it would melt how we expect it to. I don't really know if there's anything to learn. So our, our lighter ran out of fluid, but luckily Teresa, my roommate, has a fucking flamethrower. So I guess we'll just try that. I think that's enough of this. Now that the room smells exclusively of cheese, let's move on to the next tack. I mean, a little wax isn't gonna hurt you, but yeah, wash your vegetables. Some of these lack the context to even know what they're talking about, or um, any context for that matter. We melted some supplements in an oven and uh, some of them melted, so. <laughs> I think that means they're bad. This statement is completely unsubstantiated. You could say this about anything, which reminds me, and a lot of people don't know this, if peanut butter and jelly tastes good to you, you only have five years left to live, sorry. Also, rice is bad now, apparently. Hold on, rice is too expensive? So they mix it with plastic? Do you know what plastic is made out of? Oil. One of the cheapest things known to man. You mean to tell me that half of Earth's population eats rice every day and no one has brought this up? Maybe they could have gotten away with this if it was like, you know, sometimes they sneak a little cotton candy into pig brains when they run out of brains. That I could maybe believe or at least wouldn't have enough context to check, but they picked the most eaten food on the planet. Also, what really gets me is that their test uh, for uncovering this grand conspiracy that your rice is fake is just heating it up. Heating up rice is an unavoidable part of the cooking process. It's the one thing that you always do when you're cooking rice. Is there another way to prepare rice that I'm not aware of? Rice? Yeah, I just blow on it. And don't even get me started on the fact that when they heat up this plastic rice, it just turns transparent instead of, I don't know, melting. All right, so now they're tackling baby food. Baby food? But I love baby food. Wait, ground up rocks? Do you, do they know what a rock is? They're just minerals. Calcium is also a rock. Everything is a rock. And they act as if this magnet test is accomplishing anything. You know what's magnetic and supposed to be in baby food? Iron. <gasps> Our babies are eating iron. Relax, it's a mineral. Haven't you seen any commercial? Kellogg's is the only brand flakes that gives you a full day supply of iron. Wait, spinach? Rock. Broccoli? Rock. Dwayne Johnson? Rock, they're all rocks. milk will turn blue if you put seaweed in it if it's not pure milk. What do you mean pure milk? <laughs> like it's straight from the cow's udder? Because otherwise, otherwise, something has been done to that milk. You know, whole milk, uh, despite the name, is, is only 4% fat, so that means that they took 96% of something out of it, and it's probably been pasteurized. <laughs> uh, you remember pasteurization from science. In case you forgot, pasteurization just means that we can enjoy milk uh, without worrying about typhoid fever. Also, rice milk is delicious. They didn't really give any details at all, which is a theme in all of these, but I have uh, 
some premium roasted seaweed snacks, and some milk. Two things that have never <laughs> been paired together, but we're gonna break some new ground today. Steve, you got so much seaweed. I guess I guess I'm gonna start eating seaweed. You'll thank me. Are you a, are you a big fan yourself? It's it's a nice um, like midday thing when you're you just want to move your jaw. The whole think? day you haven't been moving your jaw at yeah. all because you you don't work in a job where you talk to people. Yes. So to exercise your jaw, you don't go for the chewing gum. No. You go for the seaweed. Hear that, kids? Eat your weed. <laughs> I, this is definitely like not the seaweed that they, I feel like they got seaweed like, like directly from the sea. They don't really explain why any of the things happen that they do, but they say if it's pure milk, uh, you, you'll know. Yeah. I I know this is not gonna work. What's this? Steve, shut off the camera. <gasps> it turned blue. I can't believe we've been bested by Blossom. I guess point Blossom. Just kidding, pranked. Pranked, you got pranked, you freaking idiot. I used dye. I used dye, blue dye, and I made it blue myself. I guess we're calling this one. <laughs> Coffee, this ought to be good. Pure coffee sinks and coffee with additives floats. Oh, so this is just a lie? If you've watched my channel before, you know that I'm very into coffee. See, maybe it isn't obvious to you little Folgers drinkers out there, but anyone who has used a French press or a Chemex like I have, I've used both of them and know how to do so impeccably, knows that fresh coffee floats and uh, what's the other one? Stale coffee. Stale coffee sinks. Here I have some coffee beans that are, uh, well they smell nice, but they're stale. They're at least, well these were roasted in March, so. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and grind these beans because I buy whole bean coffee. See, everyone knows. <laughs> I mean, maybe you little Starbucks heads don't know. You have to buy whole bean coffee because it's better and I'm better than you. Normally the fortunate that the coffee ground doesn't. <laughs> no. What I was saying there maybe went a little bit over your head. We've now ground some coffee. Let's see how our stale coffee did. Oh, look at the stale coffee sinking. Like a little bit. Oh, is that mud? Is that mud you've got there? No, it's coffee, but unfortunately it's stale. After all, it was roasted in March. <laughs> Here to clean off our, uh, our little grinder receptacle thingy because we wouldn't want to contaminate our fresh beans with <laughs> beans that were roasted in March. Now we have some good old Phil's coffee. Everyone knows I love Phil's coffee. See, this is the Tesora. It's one of my personal favorites and it was roasted Well, they told me it was uh, roasted yesterday, so you know when it wasn't roasted, Steve? In March. That's right. It wasn't roasted in March. All right, now back to the history of coffee. You see, it all started with a coffee berry, and we're done. It's a moment of truth. So I'm just saying it's BS. Do you want your glasses back? Yes, please. Salt is mixed with chalk. You just pour it in the salt. Of course it doesn't immediately dissolve. Of course they don't show us in the video them putting pure salt into the water uh, because they didn't, they just, they just, Took a video of a normal glass of water. We've got ourselves some some Morton salt here. Look at that little tube. You know there's chalk in there, just waiting to be found out. Let's see what happens. Wow, wow. Chalk, chalk. Look how cloudy it is. It's chalk this whole time. I found you out, Morton, you and your little umbrella. What are you hiding from? The truth. It's a truth umbrella. Wait, so doesn't this mean that Blossom is right? Just kidding, again, pranked. 
pranked. I put in more salt than was soluble in this volume of water, you frickin' dirk. Dirk, you jerk idiot. This one's also been, huh, I, I guess it does kinda clear up when you give it time to settle. I wanna talk about the end of this video cause it's dystopian as f Know the food you eat. Why should I know the food I eat? You clearly don't. Also, it's especially weird that this is so dark <laughs> coming from Blossom, whose logo is a baby with a flower around its head. Trust no one. So these facts are basically all completely fake or extremely misleading, and th that's kind of annoying. Like this story about fake green peas might be based on something that happened in China one time nine years ago. It's like kind of related to the truth, but not at all. The facts are still wrong here, but that's what I mean. Like it's like maybe. So I know I gave them a hard time, but since I have fans all across the world. If you are watching this in Hunan, China nine years ago, watch out. There's also reasonable points to be made about consumer awareness with food, but you just know that Blossom doesn't care about that at all or else they would add more context to their videos or source their claims. They just want clicks. It's a bit of a smokescreen if you ask me because they want us to be vigilant about what's in our food, but ironically we should be paying attention to what's in our feed. That's good. I'm a professional YouTuber. Bam. One last weird thing I wanted to talk about with Blossom is that one of the ways that they make money is through brand partnerships since they built this massive like 51 million follower Facebook page. But when I looked them up in the Facebook ad library, uh, which I talked about in the mobile ads video, I saw that they were like producing ads for other brands, two brands. One is just like teeth whitening commercials and the other is like a health app, quote unquote. And the commercials are all about somebody who's like having a good date and then they have some sort of pressing health issue and they're very strange. So I just wanna show you one of those. So this very attractive man is wrapping up a date and just as he's about to go in for the kiss, uh-oh, some sort of chest pain. Hold on, uh, stop the presses. Don't go into your house and end the date. I need to Google my chest pain. And then he's scared by the autocomplete results. And then his date presents him with an app that asks him some questions about his health and lets him diagnose himself right there at her door. Then it abruptly cuts to a workout montage where he's aggressively working out <laughs> while staring at a photo of the girl that he's on a date with like a serial killer. No, I don't know why he has a framed photo of a girl that he's clearly only been on a few dates with. <laughs> oh, what's that? You didn't read strenuous exercise down there at the bottom of the screen in a different color and font size. And then <laughs> he's relieved that there's like a one in five chance that he needs medication for his chest problem. And then they kiss goodnight. Thanks app using this app will get you a smooch billy242424 says the future of healthcare is here <laughs> he has apparently never heard of webmd you know as much as i clowned on the ad i couldn't help but like the main actor he uh i mean he gave a hell of a performance and he's quite the looker if you ask me huh yeah, it's probably nothing It begins. I'm currently at a casino for a wedding. I'm just gonna try and do this very uh, inconspicuously. Thanks to Marius Abercrombie Schaefer Palmore for sending me a message on Instagram. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want me to butcher your name, uh, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, and turn on notifications, please. Okay, I'm kidding.